Page 38 has a list of the um, cycle commands themselves. We already looked at the G80. We talked about G81. G82 is another cycle uh, that behaves as much the same way, but if you'll, I think it might be nice to um, consider that there's a couple here called G73, 74, 75, 76. All of them have special behavior. They're still single point operations. In other words, they are used exactly the same way over sets of X and Y coordinates. Z depths are specified. But if we look at the um, G82 cycle now, G82 does exactly the same thing a G81 does. The difference is on a G81 cycle, if this is the uh, part that we're drilling into, we're asking G81 to drill down to some Z level. In this case, my example, Z minus 1.0. So it goes down to its R level, and then we'll feed down to the final depth, and then wrap it out the moment it hits the final depth. G82 does exactly the same thing, except that the G82 will feed down to its final depth, in this case, in my example here, Z minus one, and you'll notice that the G82 has a value here of P. And P is a number of seconds that we're going to dwell. In that sample it goes P1000. What that means is that it's a 10 second uh, dwell. Right, they don't have the decimal point in this example. Some machines are configured to ignore uh, a decimal point for these p-values, some of these arguments, but that's a 10 second dwell. So what the G82 does is it goes down to its final depth, sits there for 10 seconds, and then pulls out. That is useful if you're machining castings and you want a nice flat surface on, cast, uh, on the cast surfaces. We want to take a larger diameter tool, and we're not going to drill very deep, we're just going to go usually a few a thousands into the material and then just let it sit there so that the cutter gets a good bite on all uh, points along its periphery and then pulls up again. Uh, so that's the use of the spot face cycle. It is exactly the same as the G81 except that we have some seconds of dwell. G83 we've talked about. Let's jump over to G85 for a moment. And G85 is a couple of cycles we call boring cycles. And what the G85 does, it's going to behave more or less exactly like the G83. But if you could picture this section view of a part, and if you recall, we discussed an operation called reaming, where we take a very straight fluted sort of tool and we bring it down into a pre-drilled hole so that we can accurately, accurately size the hole. With reaming, what you want to do is you want to go down to your Z depth at a feed rate and you want to pull up out of the hole at a feed rate. So the motion is to feed down into the hole, hit your Z depth, and then feed out. Whereas a G81 feeds down to its depth and then wrap it down. So if you're doing a reaming operation, you sure as heck don't want to wrap it, the tool, out of the hole that you've just sized because you'll potentially impact the quality of the surface finish that you'll have achieved if you feed it out slower. Um, so these boring cycles are, are variations of that basic behavior. Another uh, cycle of note that you're going to do a lot of is called the G84 cycle. That is a tapping cycle. 
If you remember our discussion about um, threading and tapping, that tapping is an operation where we need to pre-drill a hole to the minor diameter of a thread. And if we do a section view of a greatly exaggerated uh, threaded uh, hole, we would see all these screw threads in here. Okay, and then here's our section view. So we have these screw threads in here. The way you do a threaded hole, again, you use a tap drill. You, if you remember our discussion, we have to drill a hole that is somewhat smaller than the major diameter of the thread. So we take a drill. If our thread is going to end up to be a half inch across its points, the tap drill is usually about 17, 30 seconds. So that leaves us 15 thousandths of effective thread depth. And then after you've drilled the hole with the tap drill, you come back with a tap and you remember the tap, how those look like. We had those set up for you. And although we discussed hand tapping, what the machine does is it behaves like a G85 drill cycle in that it takes the tap, goes down to the depth, but then the minute it hits the depth, the very second the Z hits the depth, the spindle reverses so that the thread can be pulled out. The tap can be pulled out of the threaded hole. That's exactly the same as if you were hand tapping. You're taking a hand tap and you're turning your tap clockwise into your hole. When you get to the bottom where you finish tap depth, you're just taking your tap and, and, and reversing your direction to get the tap out. That's exactly what the tapping cycle does. It's, it, it's set up the same way. You simply say G84. So now the machine knows it's going to feed right in with the spindle clockwise. Then it's going to reverse the spindle and pull the z-axis and feed it out. You give it some x value, some y value, a finished z-depth, and then your feed rate would be a function of uh, the, the feed rate, what you're going to do is threads become specced out as a number of threads per inch. So this means the major diameter of the thread is a half inch, and there are 13 threads per inch. The formula for feed rates on taps are to take your RPM, whatever RPM you're running, and multiply it by one over the number of threads per inch. So if you divide one over 13, you will get a number like, let me do that very quick because I can't do that in my head too easily anymore. I think it's something like 0.07, but let me just double check that. So 1 divided by 13 is 0.0769. So 1 over threads per inch is 0.0769. And if we've turned on our machine at 100 RPM, our feed rate should equal 7.69 inches per revolution. Okay, that is the safest way to do threading feed rates. Take one over the threads per inch, multiply it by your RPM, and then you'll come up with a feed rate that is appropriate. And that's all you need to do. The machine does the rest, or the control rather. 
There are other can cycles on here, but I don't really think they're uh, something we need to talk about at this point. So now what I'd like to do is to bring for you uh, another example 